Today we're going to put together a hearty ploughman's lunch platter, with the main focus being platter presentation. Hi, I'm Taryn. Welcome to my kitchen studio. This is where I like to have fun with food and share tips and tricks to make your food not only look fantastic, but taste great too. If this is the type of thing you're into, don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you're stuck for lunch ideas, why not put together a ploughman's lunch platter? It's so simple and satisfying. These are the ingredients I'm using for my platter today. Based on the key components of a traditional ploughman's lunch, we've got the bread, ham, cheese and something pickled. I'm using gherkins or pickles and a beetroot relish today. I've also got a few of the more modern things you'll see on a ploughman's platter. Boiled eggs, cherry tomatoes and apple for a bit of sweetness, olives, a good chutney never goes amiss and some greens to add visual appeal and for presentation. A ploughman's lunch was designed to eat with minimal cutlery, maybe only a butter knife if you're lucky. So bear that in mind when you're putting together your platter and have things chopped and ready to eat. Ploughman's platters are often shared between two or more people, so today I'm going to be making mine on this beautiful board here. It will fit everything and it'll look classy. When I'm putting together a platter, I always start with something in the center. This is my base and everything else gets added around it. I'm going to put my chutney and relish bottles in the center on this one. Traditionally, you would just put a blob or two straight on the plate, but modern platters would keep these separate. I'll cut the bread into slices then I can fan them out on the plate which looks nice and keeps in mind the limited cutlery available. Using a couple of different kinds of breads also adds to the variety and overall look of the plate. My meat components are ham and salami. A nice thick ham cut straight from the bone would be perfect, but if you only have sliced ham, just roll it or fold it to create some dimension. Pork pies or leftover roast meat can also be added if you have some on hand. Thinking about not putting the same colours and textures next to each other keeps the plate interesting and visually appealing. Because this dish is so simple, quality is important. Buy the ingredients from your local farmer's market or make the components fresh, it'll be totally worth it. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video on how easy it is to make your own relishes and chutneys. A ploughman's platter would usually have a hard or semi-hard cheese. Today you often see soft cheeses like a brie or even a blue cheese on these too. I have a Havarti and Parmesan cheese cut using a vegetable peeler so that it's ready to pick up and eat. Don't be afraid to give the different components a bit of space. You don't want everything crammed together. You can always put some garnish in the little gaps if needed at the end. I'll keep adding the different components, stacking them up a little where possible to give height. I'm going to slice the apple, making sure to leave behind the core for ease of eating without cutlery. It adds to the presentation of the dish to fan out or layer thinly sliced ingredients. Put them in a few different places across the platter so that everyone can reach them when sharing the plate. And lastly, add your garnishes, a bit of lettuce, Salad greens or herbs are perfect for this. Here's our finished platter. 
I hope you've learnt some tips and tricks for putting together a ploughman's platter. Thinking about having a central starting point, giving the different components a bit of room, mixing up colours and textures, and using garnishes and height. Now you can enjoy putting your own platters together. If this is the kind of thing you're into, don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Happy Ploughman's Platter Arranging!